flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and it is early in the morning and it is cold. It's not 40 degrees yet, but I have hundreds of daffodils and possibly hundreds of tulips to harvest. And if I play my cards right, they'll be able to hold them until Mother's Day. So I actually uh, remember, I don't know if you watched that video about my biggest flower farming mistakes of 2020. Well, I mentioned not having a cooler was one of those mistakes. And uh, this is where that comes to haunt me because my refrigerator is already full with hundreds of daffodils. So I uh, definitely going to be feeling that, but it's okay. I have CSA bouquets that are gonna go out this week. So that'll be making up some room and then I'll be able to hold what I can for Mother's Day. So this patch right here is a patch of daffodils new this year called Tahiti. They're absolutely gorgeous. So Tahiti is pure yellow with this gorgeous orange roughly center. Now, in order to figure out what this was, I brought it downstairs I brought a closed bud downstairs, put it in the grow room where the humidity and the temperatures are higher, and that opened up overnight to reveal the gorgeousness of Tahiti. So I have one that's fully opened and I have hundreds more to harvest right here. And they are ready to harvest. So here's one that's a little bit more open and here's one that's not a little bit more open, but I can harvest them at this stage. They'll just take longer to open, which is good because I do want to save some of these for Mother's Day bouquets. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick these and uh, I'll offer some in my CSA this week. So I'll bring some downstairs in the grow room so that they open up a little faster, but the rest I'm gonna hold in the fridge for Mother's Day. So I've picked this one pretty clean. There are still some, but the casings are still over top of the bud and I like them to be a little bit more open when they're double daffodils. So I definitely want to hold off on the rest of these. I probably will give them another day or two in the field just so those casings peel back and they'll all look like this. So that's, this is basically what I'm looking for. This is not. See how the casing is still wrapped up over top of it? I'm gonna take this inside and see what it does, but I definitely like the casings to be off. So just will guarantee that it opens. I did pick some at this stage last year and uh, some of them never opened up on me. So I like to make sure that they're fully open and the casings are off the buds. I actually don't know what this is. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look it up. Okay, so I just checked my stats and this, the next two batches are either white lion or westward again if you've not watched my previous videos we had a fire at a family member's house the weekend that we planted this so nothing was labeled we just dug trenches threw stuff in the ground and we're helping out with the fire and the devastation that followed so i'm not sure but they're both double westward and white lion are either there or there there are a couple ready in each spot so i'm going to pull them up keep them separate and then figure out which one they are. On the end, I can tell you that that's pink charm because that's a single trumpet. I can tell, pink charm, but I have no idea what the rest is. There are only a few that are fully ready here, so I'm gonna let these sit for a couple days too. No big deal. Now these ones I can tell are pink charm because they are single fluted beautifulness. They're kind of short though. Not loving how short they are. Look at the wee baby, it's like eight inches. I don't love that. I'm gonna pick this one, I'm gonna bring her downstairs and see how quickly she opens. So here we are up even further, like three beds over. These are flower drift. The majority of them are. I think there are a couple here and there that are not flower drift. The balls must have got screwed up, but the majority of them are flower drift. Yeah, they are. These flower drift, they're also ready to pick. And this is a crazy amount. These are a little bit smaller. You know, the, the Tahiti, and the westward, the white lion, those are four inch blooms. These are a little bit smaller than that, but they're still equally gorgeous. These were sent to me as flower drift. They kind of look like flower drift. I think I'll have to wait and see until it's fully opened. Let me pick. I 
just grabbed another little handful from the mixed daffodil patch and I did notice that the, uh, I think they're yellow cheerfulness, they're starting to crack open. But I don't harvest the ones with multiple buds until one of the buds has opened up and then I'll harvest it. Plus they're still a little on the short side. I'll, t I'll uh, show you what it looks like. This is a mixture of just the, the cute little trumpets and then I've got some uh, repletes in here and then some other yellow trumpets with peachy middles they're really pretty and then on the end here that I have not started harvesting yet those are the Sir Winston Churchill's they're the last daffodils that I have to bloom they are budding up and they're about four inches tall they'll get much taller than that and they are the most fragrant ones that I have anyway I love them so much they're so amazing I think that's enough in the daffodil uh, field today. I definitely will have some more to pick tomorrow. Now I am going to, I, I've been painstakingly counting and keeping track of stems so that I can compare this year's harvest to next year's harvest so I can see exactly how many times they multiply. So I already have a list inside. I can tell you exactly how many I've picked so far and I'll, I'll reference that list and, uh, and tell you guys that. But first I need to get another crate and head over to pull some tulips. Okay, so these are the tulips that I've already pulled some of this right here. These are called Christmas Dream. They're a hot pink, beautiful deep rose, hot pink mix. And then these are called White Marble. Obviously, they're a white tulip. Now this one is a little bit further than I'd like to have it open. I like to harvest at what's called the color crack stage. And that's where you can, you can tell what color the tulip is going to be. If you harvest it at the stage, bulb and all, then it will color up for you when you put it in the vase. So I am gonna go ahead and pull all the ones that I think are ready. I have a crate full basically of Christmas dream. There still are some that have a little bit of color crack. I'm gonna let them stay another day or so. We're supposed to get some rain tomorrow. We'll see if that will uh, make them grow a little bit because they are on the short side. They're not too bad because I pull the bulb and I do that because tulips are an annual crop for flower farmers. So that's not a bad height because I pulled the bulb. Now, if I were to cut this right here, then it's definitely a shorter stem. So there are multiple reasons why we pull the bulb in flower farming and I've gone over them before in the video that I did specifically about tulips and daffodils. Now these ones are really a nice height. Wow. I'm gonna leave the rest for another day because I don't have room for it. Here are those ice cream double ones that are gonna be really cool. Now doubles, you have to wait a little bit longer before you harvest them, otherwise they will not open. Right next door here, right next, like I could pick those. That's what I mean by color crack. The top of the tulip is colored and cracked. The Flower Hill Farm porch is getting a makeover. Would you get a splinter? No, it's, there's prickers on that. Yes, <laughs> there's prickers on some things. So my mom is here and she's gonna be scraping and painting about a third of the porch today, you think? Yeah, about a third. About a third, and then, uh, so now it looks, um, this is what it's looked like, because you don't paint a porch, you're supposed to stain a porch, but previous owners painted this, so um, until we can get, what's it called? What's that stuff called? What? The artificial 
stuff. Oh, that tea bags. Yeah, is until we can no, afford bags, the yeah. artificial stuff. He left a brand new five gallon thing of paint. Uh, so look at that. Because the rain comes in on the edges, it all comes up around the edges, and then the interior is totally fine. <laughs> Hi, Axel. Are you gonna help Grandma today? Yes, I got scraped before. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So now everything on the porch is on this end. But so we're gonna do this portion today and then she's gonna come back a couple of times and uh, take care of the rest. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Renee's modeling one of my found hats. Oh my God. Those are the ones, one of the ones I found <laughs> in the closet. It looks knit, but it's one of those crochet patterns that looks knit. Okay, it's still freezing, but I've been helping um, do a couple projects, so I'm getting a little bit warmer. I think it's maybe 48 degrees now. It's still cold. <laughs> okay, so the total of my harvest, I just counted up these stems, adding to the old stems. So far, the total harvest for that first section that I started harvesting from, the mixed daffodils, the trumpets, the smaller ones, the bigger ones, the total for that is 518 stems. Not bad. That's a lie. I forgot to add today's in. <laughs> so the total for that middle section, the one that I've been harvesting earliest from, is 500, and let me add it up. I forgot to add today's stems in, hold on. 539 stems from that middle section. And I think I planted 300 bulbs there last year. It was 250 from Edney, and then there were more bulbs from DutchBulbs.com. So 539 stems from the middle section. And there are still some buds that are coming up out of the ground, some later varieties from that mix. So I'll have more to harvest. I bet I will have over 600 stems from just that middle section. Okay, so the replete so far harvested 223 flowers from, and I planted 225 bulbs. So I think I do have a couple more left in the field to grab that are not quite ready yet, but so that's pretty much 100% out of that one. That's fantastic. Okay, so flower drift so far, and I left a lot out there. So far flower drift, today was the first harvest on that section, and I don't even know if it's flower drift. I gotta be honest with you. Here's the one that's open, and I questioned it last year. I questioned, I sent a, a picture to my, I sent a picture to my uh, rep and I asked if that was flower drift. And I mean, it kind of looks like flower drift, but it kind of doesn't look like flower drift. So I'm not exactly sure it does have a nice light scent too. Uh, my flower rep, by the way, is Dave Dowling. And uh, I want you guys to listen. If you're curious about tulips and why they are only, um, annual flowers for flower farmers, listen to a podcast Dave Dowling was just on. It's Jenny Love's No-Till Flowers podcast. I'll put it in the description below. It's a great explanation of why we do what we do with the tulips. So listen to that and it's full of great information. So the Tahiti, so far I have 58 stems. So, and that's, there's a lot more that I left out there that I'll get over the next few days. So 58 Tahiti, 539 mix and 223 replete and 102 flower drip. There's there's so many. And this is um, just the beginning of really the second half of my daffodil season. I have several varieties that are just now starting to bud up. And don't forget that Sir Winston Churchill, she's the queen. Wait, he, he's the king. <laughs> so for Mother's Day, I'm going to be offering a mix of daffodils and tulips and I have um, some of these tulips right here. I'll show you guys the fridge where I'm keeping it. It's just a refrigerator. That's all I have right now, but I take out all the shelves, I take out all the drawers, and I make as much room for, as possible for my flowers right now. A lot. This is my flower fridge. It's in my breezeway, and it is a full fridge. There's no freezer at all. We bought it for drinks, and it's turned into the flower fridge. So here's what the middle looks like right now. There's that Tahiti. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Full open Tahiti. I've got some other stuff starting to open here. There's more replete in here. Uh, there are more, what are these? 
Oh shoot. I did harvest some flower drift already. I totally forgot about that. So those are the dafts before I put the dafts that I just harvested in. And there's pizza and some apple juice. And then up there, I already have <laughs> some tulips. And you can see that they're sitting there at cracked bud stage. They still have the bulbs on. That's macaroni salad from dinner last night. So I just took these two drawers out so I have another shelf. And eventually I'll take the bottom two out too, but kind of holding water bottles at the moment. We have that for guests because we have well water and not everyone loves well water. I'm just stripping the lower leaves and uh, rinsing it. A lot of times dirt can settle in the in the bottom and the lower leaves. I'm just rinsing the dirt off the bulb. Don't really want that mess in my refrigerator and it just makes it cleaner. So this is the flower fridge in full effect. All of those dafts that I just pulled are hanging out on that shelf in there. I'm holding them dry. Now you can hold daffodils dry, I found for at least a week, and then you put them back in the water and overnight they perk up and they start to open up. So I found this method works for me, especially when I wanted to hold them for about a week out from events. But I'm definitely gonna use this. I'm gonna see what my CSA customers want this week. I'm gonna offer them a mixed bouquet of dafts and tulips. And then whatever I have left, I'm gonna open up Mother's Day reserves. I would say I have at least 600 stems in the fridge right now. So it'll clear out for my CSA and then it'll get packed again with the rest of the stuff that's coming in from the field. And then there's this one really short stem of Apricot Delight that I'm gonna let open up in the, uh, in the grow room downstairs to see what it looks like. It's a mess. This is a bag of um, shoes that don't fit my kids anymore. I cleaned this room yesterday and wow, we haven't really gone anywhere in over a year. We didn't go school shopping last year. So all of my kids have outgrown all of their things and all of my kids, both of my kids. And uh, yeah, so I have a whole entire garbage bag to go for uh, the Salvation Army. I'm drop this stuff off. But I also have shoes that my girlfriend's son will fit into. So I'm excited about that. Anyway, ooh, squirrel. I'm gonna keep it for myself, I'm yawning. I'm gonna bring it down to the grow room and maybe use it for like a photo shoot or something. So I love to do that. Let one thing open up, take a bunch of pictures of it and enjoy it. And then let your customers know what it's gonna look like when it opens up at their house. So the other thing is this is, this is all I have. It's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem because I have probably 1,500 lilies. I have like, like 25 or 2,600 tulips left to pull. I have thousands of daffodils to pull. The issue with not having a cooler is an issue. And a lot of people say, just get a cool bot. Well, I don't really have a space. I might, after the grow room is cleared out, I might put an air conditioner down there, turn that on and see how cool I can keep that. If I can keep it in the 40s, um, then it'll be better than not having one at all. I put whatever I can in the flower fridge and then use that space down there. But I'm not gonna have that in time for my tulips. Uh, because I'll still be using it for my uh, my hot weather crops like the celosia and the amaranth and stuff But I might get that in time for my lilies and it does stay cooler down there in the summer anyway So putting up that plastic and maybe throwing an AC like one of those um, Portable AC units like a portable heater But an AC unit on the floor in there because I don't have a window down there that would I, I could use an air conditioner or a cool bot for so it would have to be one of those self-standing air conditioner units So we'll see We'll see, the long-term goal is to build a shop where I can do all of the stuff that I'm doing in the basement, in the shop where I can have drainage in the, whole, in the basement because I don't have, or drainage in the floor because I don't have drainage in the basement. I am not able to water things the way that I want to because I don't have drainage in the floor and I can't flood my basement. <laughs> so 
So uh, the long-term goal is to have a shop with um, a grow room out there and a whole entire cooler out there with an office for me and stuff because things are kind of getting over my head rather quickly with the, the space and stuff like that. So that's the long-term goal. In the meantime, I'm making do with what I have and that's okay. I'm just gonna have to sell things faster. Just gotta sell them faster. I mean, ideally, you have your stuff sold before you pick them from the field. <laughs> That's the ideal situation. So I probably should get on that. All right, I'm gonna go send some emails out and maybe do a Mother's Day pre-order. Anyway, all right, thanks for sticking around. I'm gonna go help my mom with the porch and get some other stuff done around here and also send those emails out about selling the flowers. Thanks for sticking around, we'll see you soon. The thrippin' trucks go by, quiet please. Filming in progress. I have no idea. I don't know what's what. Ugh, I got hair in there. You're doing great, Mom. You're doing great. All right, thanks, babe.